Welcome to Google Physics. We make videos for GCC and A-level physics, but we also make lots of videos aimed at educators to help you improve your online educational resources. In this series of videos, we're talking about how to improve your educational videos. And in this one, I'm going to talk about how to use different software to improve your educational videos. I'm going to talk to you about why you should be doing some editing. So stick around to the end to discover the importance of actually editing your videos. All this detail can be found in my book, Teach on YouTube, how to start and grow education YouTube channels. I've put all my six years of experience into this book, including the things I've got wrong along the way and what I've learned. So check this out. And at any point, if you've got more questions about using software or any part of making educational videos, just put them in the comment section below. Another tip is editing is fun. So enjoy editing. I mean, I use what's called Adobe Premiere Pro, which is a really pro version of an editing software, but there are lots of free versions that you can try. The best free version is DaVinci Resolve, but that might take a little bit of learning. Certainly you can go with just what exists on your computer already. In the Windows Photos app, there is a video editor there. And on a Mac, there's iMovie and those are free and they work. Do some editing because it's great to be able to cut out the bits you got wrong and to be able to add clips in where you didn't fully explain something. The purpose of video editing is actually to tell a better story. But you can also capture moments and you can put those together into a story later on in your video. You can capture those little moments in your classroom, maybe when that experiment went well or that quick demonstration that you did in your classroom. And you can put them together with your voiceover in your video editing software later. Video editing is something to get really involved with and it's something that you, you will start to enjoy. You can also do fun things like I actually have a green screen which I've, I've kind of stopped using very much but I used to use it quite a lot to overlay myself on the other images of things that I was doing. And it's a quite a fun way to present a video. I've also made videos with myself in them twice just by using a kind of split screen and a really simple bit of video editing. And talking again about free software, and I suggest you find some free software to use to start either screen capturing or start editing. And the best screen capture and free software is OBS, which is Open Broadcast Software. Now that is absolutely free, but it will take a little bit of learning for yourself. And there are loads of other free things out there, but I suggest if all you want to do is capture your screen whilst you talk over it, use the built-in Xbox gaming things, which if you hit Windows G on a Windows computer, it will bring up an app that will just record your screen. It's designed for gamers to record clips of their games, but uh, we can just use it to record anything on our screens. All you really need your editing software to be able to do is just to trim, edit and add some titles. But the longer you work on videos, the more you'll find reasons to want to do more. The more you'll find that you'll want some extra functionality. The function that I couldn't do without is audio compression. And compression is something that makes your voice sound more like it would if it was on the radio or on TV. Every single voice you hear on the radio on TV has compression on it. And that makes it sound more like how it sounds in your head, let's say. <laughs> Here's my voice with a really high quality USB mic without compression. And here's my voice with the same microphone, but with compression. It stops it going loud and quiet and it makes it a more even pitch and tone. But I certainly also couldn't do without using picture in picture, which is when you overlay a video or a pit or a photograph on top of or within the picture that you're actually doing. The thing about editing that you need to understand is that people are used to seeing well edited videos on YouTube, on TV and everywhere that we consume videos. It's not really good enough to take 15 minutes to explain something that actually could in a well edited video take only 5 minutes. People won't pick your video or choose your channel if they think you haven't put the time and effort into actually polishing that video to make it the most productive 5 minutes that it could be. And actually, if you put so much effort into making and designing and thinking about the content of the video, you owe it to yourself to take the time afterwards to polish it and make it as good as it can be. And that's why editing is important. So don't ignore this step. Take your time to learn the basics of editing. And in my book, I break it down how you can make it a really slick workflow and how actually it needn't take a massive amount of time. And actually, it's really good fun, especially when you start to see your videos looking and sounding great. So check out this playlist for all my videos aimed at teachers and educators on how to improve your educational videos. And also check the links in the description and pinned comment for my book, Teach on YouTube. There's all this and much, much more detail in this book.